morning, William. Good morning, Miss Seaton. Is Father home? He and Mr. Ned walked to church. We're waiting for Miss Linda. Oh, come in a minute, will you, darling? Sure. Uh, wave in her, please. Uh, bring my bags in, William. Good morning, Miss Julia. <laughs> it's good to see you back again, Miss Julia. Thanks, James. Oh, will you ask Miss Minnie to step into the third floor sitting room, please? Uh, yes, Miss. Go on, all aboard. Now where am I? <laughs> I've just told you where I live. <laughs> I didn't know people lived at railway stations. <laughs> oh, you lazy people! <laughs> A very bad echo. Then if you stop criticizing this place, or I'll call the bouncer. The bouncer? The bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what have we here? But, Julia, you must all be so rich. You should have told me. Why? Would it have made any difference? Well, I should say so. <laughs> Why did I should have married me in two days instead of ten? Aren't you funny, Johnny, to talk about it? Well, why? If I'd suddenly found out you could play the piano, I'd be delighted, wouldn't I? Is having money like knowing how to play the piano? Well, they're both very pleasant accomplishments in a girl. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you decide I'd do? I fell in love with you, silly. Stay in here. <laughs> but you know awfully little about me. I am a man of the people. I started life with these two hands. So did the gentleman over the fireplace. Take heart from Grandfather Seaton. You wouldn't tell me you're those Seaton's. Forgive us, Johnny, but we are. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not let the fun go out of it. Why do we have to spill it so soon? Oh, but I have to tell Father. It would be different if his mother were alive. I could break it gently through her, I suppose. But as it is... Eventually, I, I know, but, but why the rush? But, Johnny, I thought you wanted to be married as soon as possible. I do. Well, that's another place Father comes in. You know, I just hate the thought of sitting down with a man and being practical about you. <laughs> but, darling, we can't just go wandering up snowy mountains and through pine woods the rest of our lives, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we can do better than that. Come here. Now, kiss me. Several times, please. Is that all right? All right, Angel. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, Julia, for shame, Julia. Is this any way to spend Sunday morning? <laughs> How are you, darling? Did you have a nice trip? Oh, best trip ever, dear. <laughs> Who's your partner? Anyone I know? <laughs> Why, 
is Mr. Case, my sister Linda. Well, how do you do? Well, thanks. And you? Couldn't be better. Johnny Case, his name is. I'm going to marry him. Step around here in the light, will you, Case? <laughs> But I've never even seen you before. Neither had I until ten days ago at Plastic. You're not a guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> this younger generation. Well, young man, I hope you realize what you're getting in for. Mm, that's pleasant. Oh, I don't mean you, darling. You're <laughs> divine. I mean, um, father and cousin Seton Cram and Laura. And the rest of the outlying Seatons. And the general atmosphere of overflowing wealth with Papa sitting on the lid. <laughs> Johnny will try to bear up, won't you, Johnny? I'll do my best. But how did you two get together? Come on, tell Linda everything. Well, I'll tell you. You see, I was walking along the road one morning, when who should I see but this young... should I see but? When who should I see but this young man coming along carrying snowshoes? I spoke to him and said, I suppose you don't realize it, but your nose is frozen. And he said, no, I hadn't realized it. And I said, well, it is. And he said, I don't suppose there's anything you personally can do about it. Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and I picked up some snow and started rubbing his nose with it. Fancy that, a downright pickup, a uh, romance. <laughs> go on. So then you swept her over snowshoes, huh? Yes. It was touch and go with us. I like this man. Does father know about it yet? No. Oh, he'll never forgive you if you don't tell him now. Oh, we're going to elope. No, we're not. Now that's where you come in. When do you think I ought to break the news? I know. Know what? When to tell him. Come on. Oh. We're going to church. To church? Yeah. What for? Oh, don't worry. Not you. Oh. Come on. <laughs> but I have to change, dear. Oh, we have time. Well, Father, we'll have to step on it. Wait a minute. You better take the elevator or you'll get lost. <laughs> and don't forget to be here for luncheon. A case never forgets luncheon. <laughs> and remember, you haven't been here this morning. All right, I'll run along home. <laughs> See you later, Case. Right. So you'll have to hurry. Oh, I know it. What are you after now? Are you sure father will like Johnny? Well, he will if he has any sense. Are you certain church is the place to tell him? Oh, of course, he can't say anything in church. I suppose you have I... to cool off before he starts objecting. That's the main thing. Well, I suppose you're right, dear. You always are. Well, I think I am about this. Come on now, just take Sister Linda's hand and let's, let's get started. any right to say things like that. He's the first one I've ever picked. Wait till you see him. I think you're both hysterical over this fellow. Oh, Ned, he's really divine. Well, we don't need a saint in this family. <laughs> Sonny, you're early. Too soon? Oh, don't be oh, silly. No. Charles, would you read this room twice and Mr. Seaton comes in, please? Very well, miss. This is my brother Ned, Mr. Keith. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I expect father will be a job. When do they do battle? Before <laughs> luncheon, I suppose. Oh, see here, Keith. I'm afraid you're going to need a little coaching. Well, I'll be grateful for anything in this trouble. 
All right, let's assume that you're interviewing our stern parents. Sit down, young man. Oh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> now, uh, have you anything at all but your winning way to your credit? Uh, well, uh, really, Mr. Seaton, I have uh, <laughs> not a thing. Oh, hadn't he, though? The oh. first thing father will want to know is how were you fixed? Fixed? Fixed. Are you a man of means? And if so, how much? Linda. Be still, beauty. I know you'd hardly expect that of a man in father's position, but the fact of the matter is, money is our god here. Linda, I'll... Johnny, that isn't true at all. No? What is then? <clears throat> well, young man? I have in my pocket now exactly $34. And a package of cigarettes. Will I have one? Thanks. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, uh, gilt edge securities? <clears throat> no, uh, rolling woodland? Well, I have a few shares of common stock tucked away. Common? Don't even say the word. <laughs> no, Julia? I'm afraid it won't do. He's a comely boy, but just another of the vast army of cock watchers. How are you, uh, socially? Nothing there, either. What? You mean to say your mother wasn't even a hoosier? Not even that. You must know some prominent people. Drop a few names. For instance? Oh, just casually. When, um, when I was to Mrs. On the Donk bullfight last night, <laughs> who should I see, but whom should I see, but Mrs. Carrara Marble. <laughs> well, really? I thought she'd die laughing. <laughs> this is a lot of blood, you know. I'm having a grand time. <laughs> Johnny, she says. She calls me Johnny. <laughs> Linda, will you be quiet? What on earth has set you off this time? But it's dreadful, Julia. Just what do you think you're going to prove with Edward Seaton, financier and cotillion leader? Well, when I find myself in a position like this, I ask myself, what would General Motors do? Then I do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's keeping from <laughs> Don't hurry him. He said he had to stop to see Sam Hobson about something. You. I hope I get a good character. Anyone like a drink? Well, if it goes through all right, are you really going to make it quick? Yeah. Then the next month. Okay. Cocktails aren't allowed at midday, so just before lunch is announced, I'll ask you if you'd uh, care to rush up. Guess what I'll say. <laughs> it's Father. Don't weaken. Johnny, you go on up to Ned's room. You haven't arrived yet. Well, listen, this is getting complicated. When do I arrive? One o'clock. It's, uh, uh, quarter two now. Go on, do as you're told. Yeah, but listen, you, Ned. Listen, you saucy... Go on, Case. Don't expect simplicity here. Just think of all our Fifth Avenue fronties. <laughs> <laughs> Go on now. Step on it, Ned. <laughs> you do like him, don't you? She asked me if I like him. My dear girl, do you realize that life walked into this house this morning? <laughs> oh, marry him quick before father starts the old cry. You're being married for your money. Well, that's always flattering, isn't it? Well, stand your ground, Julia. If you don't know your own mind by now, you haven't got a mind. Now, you name your date and stick to it, I'm telling you. I want father to see that Johnny has the self-same qualities that grandfather had. And there's no reason why he shouldn't arrive just where grandfather did. It'll be awful to leave you. I don't know just what I'll do when you go. I'll have to do something. Get out, quit on it, change somehow or I'll go mad. I could curl up and die right now. Why, darling. Why, my foot, I don't look sick, do I? Oh, if I could only get warm in this barn. Don't you worry about me, I'm all right. You look out for yourself now. And when big business comes in here, see to it you don't let him talk you in. But by a strange coincidence, here he is now. Did you see Mr. Hobson, Father? Well, of course, my dear, but there are other things to be considered. We must find out something about this young man's background. Oh, the boy has loads of charm, Father. Charm? I suppose it's solid merit you're after. Well, the rumor is he's got that, too. A sterling chap on the whole. He's a catch, in fact. Father, what did Mr. Hobson say? We, we must find out more about this young man's background. But what did he say? Ned, pardon me. I view the financial section of the Times. 
No, uh, I try to take Sundays off when I can. Which reminds me, I should like you to make a practice of remaining at the office until 6 o'clock. Well, there's nothing for me to do after 3. I'm not going to fight Didn't a Didn't you of... understand me, Ned? All right. Father, what did Mr. Hobson say about Johnny? His report was not at all unfavorable. That must have been a blow. But, but what did he say? Julia, we must find out more about this young man. He, he seems to have some business ability. In fact, he's put through what looks like a very successful reorganization of seaboard utilities. He holds some of the stock. But we must find out more about Mr. Case's people, his connections. Father, if you reach for a social register, I shall cry out with pain. Of course, he doesn't realize that you've spoken to me as yet. Oh, Julia works fast, but not that fast, well, I, Julia. I don't propose to allow the subject of uh, an engagement to come up in my first talk with him. I think I'm quite competent to direct the conversation. Julia, you and Ned may excuse yourself on one pretext or another, but I... I should like you to remain, Linda. Mr. Case wishes to be announced, sir. Yes. <sighs> Keep a stiff upper lip, Father. No doubt the fellow is a fortune hunter. Father, uh, oh, here you are. Here I am. This is my father, Mr. Case. How do you do, Mr. Case? How do you do, sir? This is my daughter, Linda. Oh, yes. It's I... an unexpected pleasure. And my son, Ned. How do you do? I recall the face, but the figure puzzles me. Julian, if uh, you and Ned will do the telephoning I spoke of, Linda and I will try and entertain Mr. Case until the others come, won't we, Linda? Sure, I'm game. Coming, Ned? Sit down, Mr. Case. Well, thank you, sir. I wonder what we'd do without the telephone. We're quite at the mercy of the weather these days. Yes, yes, we are. In business in New York? Yes, I'm in the law. I'm with Sloan Hobson. Sloan Hobson, excellent, excellent firm. Uh, a born New Yorker? No, I was born in Baltimore in 1898, July 6th. Baltimore, oh yes, yes, yes. I had, I had several very warm friends in Baltimore. The Whites, the Clarence Whites. Uh, possibly you know them. No, no, I don't believe I ever did. But then there was... Uh, there was Archie Fuller's family. Well, you see, I haven't been there in some years, and I probably wouldn't have known them anyway. My mother and father died when I was quite young. You see, uh, my father had a small grocery store in Baltimore, which he was never able to make much of a go of. He left a number of debts which my mother worked hard to clear up. I was the only child, and I wasn't in a position to be of much help. My mother died the May before my 16th birthday. How sad. Yes, yes, it was sad. I hadn't any connections except for, a, for an uncle in Wilmington who was in the roofing business. He wasn't much good, though. Was inclined to get drunk. Still is. Mm. Well, we've got an uncle like that. But he keeps off roofs. <laughs> oh, I was what was known as a bright boy, and I managed to wangle a couple of scholarships. They helped a good deal during school and college. Then there were always plenty of ways to make up the difference. Uh, during term time, I, uh, I ran eating joints and typed lecture notes. In the summer, I sold aluminum pots and pans. Linda. Are you listening? Or, or worked at a factory or on a newspaper. Once I got myself engaged as a tutor, that was pretty unpleasant. Then there were department stores at Christmas and uh, florist shops at Easter. During law school, I slept all night on a couch in a doctor's office and got $15 a week for it. That was soft. Admirable. Uh, well, is there anything else I can tell you about myself, Mr. Seaton? What? Why, uh, well, that is to say Well, then I... how about it? About what? About Julia and me. You and Julia? I'm afraid I... About our getting married. This is a complete surprise to me, Mr. Case. I... I don't quite know what to say to you. Well, uh, yes would be pleasant. Mr. Case, I don't know you at all. Well, I'll give you every opportunity, if you'll permit me. Well, you must, uh, you must lunch with me sometime. Yeah. Julia, Ned, what in the world can be keeping Seton and Laura? I think Mr. Sloan and Mr. Hobson might say a good word for me. I'm nobody much as things go, but I'm, uh, I'm quite decent and fairly civilized. And I love your daughter very much, which, which isn't a bit hard. She, she seems to like me quite a lot, too. That's about all that can be said for me. Except that I think we've got a simply grand chance to be awful happy. Uh, what do you say, Julia? Oh, so do I. Oh, come on, Father. Be an angel. I think he's a very good number. Oh, dear, I'm afraid this is altogether too important a matter to be decided offhand. Oh, but I want to be married. Julia, you'll be married when I've reached a favorable decision and upon a day which I will name. 
and we let it rest at that for the time. Oh, but you'll come around, Father. I've got a simply swell hunch that you'll come around. And then what fun. Let's all join hands and... Well, that must be seating in Laura now. You bet it is. Let's not join hands. Yes, indeed. Well, here they are. Hello, hello. I do hope we're not late, Uncle Ned. Oh, indeed. You're early. Oh, oh dear, yes, my dear, oh, you're oh, best. Oh, so are you, darling. <laughs> And I Linda, how simple. Oh, careful, Laura. Careful. I got the most terrible cold. Oh, oh Linda. Too bad. Hello, Ned. Hello. Mr. Case, this is my nephew, Mr. Cram. And uh, Mrs. Cram. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Oh, well, uh, Ned. Aren't you going to brush up before luncheon? Would you care to brush up before lunch, Case? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I, I think I shall. If I may. Julia? Oh, I'm all right, thanks, dear. But look at me, will you? Simply covered with dust. Now, how do you... Wait, boy, wait. Linda's coming. Laura? I'm going to marry that man. Julia! Oh, that's news. His name is Case. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he one of the Chicago cases? Well, I don't know, dear. I don't think so. Well, aren't there some cases in Boston? You don't think they'll think we walked out on them? <laughs> We've been trying to convey that impression for years. <laughs> you wait a minute. I don't suppose you realize it, but you're rather a strange bird in these parts, Case. How's that? Oh, you should see the kind of men we have around here most of the time. Where have you been? Mm, working hard. What about those little jumps to the Adirondacks? Come clean, Case. That's the first holiday I've ever had. But I mean to live someday, pretty soon now. Johnny's dream. Case, you astonish me. I thought you were a willing worker. I am, when I can get what I'm working for. What would that be? Mine's a simple story. I, I want to save part of my life for myself. There's a catch to it, though. It's got to be part of the young part. Oh, you'll never get on and up that way. All right, but I want my time while I'm young. And let me tell you, the minute I get my hands on, a, on about 20 nice round thousands, I'm going to do nothing for as long as they last and... Quit? Quit. Retire young and work old. That's what I want to do. Play while the playing's good, huh? It isn't only that I want to have fun, and I don't want to loaf either. But I want to take a holiday and make sure that the thing I do for the rest of my life is what I want to do more than anything in the world. Grand. Does Julia know about it? No. No use getting her hopes up until it happens. Don't tell her, will you? I, uh, I wouldn't try any enlightened living stuff on this family if I were you, Case. Oh, please try it, Johnny Case. Please try it. Julia has enough of her own right now for two, or for ten, for that matter. Grandfather did us pretty pretty. Thanks, but I've got to do myself. Only just pretty enough. I see. That's foolish, but you're all right, Case. You haven't been bitten, no. Nope. You've not been caught by it. By what? The reverence for riches. You're a funny girl. Funny, am I? What about you, you big stiff? <laughs> <laughs> Shakes, it, doesn't. I mean funny in a, in a flattering sense. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. Haven't you brushed up yet? You, yeah. We couldn't without you. <laughs> How's father? Oh, he's recovering, I think. <laughs> I want to announce it right away, so that if father... Oh, I've got a swell <laughs> hunch father will come around. Julia, let me give a party for it, will you? Not father, me. Why, of course, dear, that would be charming. Father's to have nothing to do with it. Oh, let's have some fun in this house before you leave it. Why, Linda? I mean it. Let me, won't you? If Father doesn't mind. No ifs about it at all. And just a few people. Very informal. Not a bank of pink roses and no string quartet during supper. <laughs> all I want for entertainment is just one good tap dancer. Oh, let me give it for you. Let me do something for you once. Just. Me, Julia. Why, well, I'd love it, dear. Really, I would. It won't be a ball. It'll be just a simple sit-down supper. And you know where? In the old playroom. Oh, but... But don't you think... No, that... because that's the only room in this house anybody ever had any fun in. Oh, oh, Julia, this is important to me. No one must touch my party but just me. Uh -huh. I'll telephone people and... And we won't send out engraved invitations. To Linda's party. No engraved invitation. <laughs>
Well, Father, quite a circus. You know where Linda is? Haven't the slightest idea. Hello, Edward. Oh, hello, Jack. How are you? Charming party. Thank you. Where's Linda? I understood she was to be our hostess. I, I believe she has a severe headache. I think she'll, uh, she'll put in an appearance later, a little later. Oh, I hope so. I'm sure. Cigarette, Julia. Oh, no thanks, Pete. Not a week, though. Laura. No thanks. And there are so many other things that I must tell you. You don't know how much I can do. We both can do for you. After all, there's no reason why either you or Johnny should do anything that Seaton and I, because of our experience, <laughs> could do more easily than you. The wedding, particularly. I can take practically the whole responsibility. I've been matron of honor I don't know how many times. And you know, dear, that Seaton has been a part of every important wedding in New York. That's true. You're both dears, and it's awfully sweet of you. And I'd be glad if you... Of course, we're very happy to do everything we can. <laughs> oh, well, yes, Julia. And who's to be Johnny's best man? Well, I don't know, Laura. It should be someone important. Yes, of course. I wouldn't suggest Seaton for best man, certainly. But it would look awfully well if Seaton stood up with him. You understand what I mean, dear. Yes, dear. Oh, Johnny. Seaton and Laura are going to be such a help to us, dear. Oh, that's just splendid. And Johnny should spend as much time with Seaton as possible before you two go away. Yes, I'm only too willing, Johnny, to arrange my appointments. Well, thanks, but, but I'm pretty busy, you know. I... And you talk to Johnny about the idea, the best man. Oh, oh, Julia, how lovely you look. But whatever is the matter with Linda, Julia? Why isn't she here? Oh, um, a dear friend of hers is very ill. Um, it's expected to pass on tonight, in fact. You know Linda. But we hope Linda will be able to join us presently. Well, I hope so. <laughs> But, Laura, I've told everyone Linda has a headache. But I had to say something. Besides, everybody's been asking where she is. I must see Ned a minute. Oh, well, Johnny, aren't you going to dance? No. Uh, no, I don't think so, no. Ned, what can we do? Father is furious about Linda. Not unusual. Ned, wait a minute. It's her party. Don't make me laugh, Julia. It was, maybe, until you and Father took it over. I did. You stood by and saw it done. Then the crayons got hold of it. Among you, you invited the whole bunch. You knew it was just what Linda didn't want. Altogether, you made Linda's funny little bust into a first-class funeral. Can't say I blame her. No. However, drink to Linda. Well, I blame her. She should have realized that Father can't announce my engagement without some fuss. She should have, yes. But unlike me, Linda always hopes. Bottoms up to Linda. You've been drinking steadily since 8 o'clock. Darling sister, I shall drink as much as I like at any party I agree to attend. And as much as I like, and as much as I can hold. It's my protection against your tiresome friend. Linda's out of luck. She hasn't any protection. Hello, Ned. Hello, Johnny. Having a good time? You liar. Great. <laughs> Johnny, I wish something could be done about Ned. Apparently, a lot of things go on inside him that we've no idea of. Linda must be at the end of some rope or other, too. Ned always does this. Always. Well, there must be a reason for both of them. Linda's got to be found. People know there's something wrong now. They must know. All right, darling. Just try to enjoy tonight, won't you? Oh, I think it's the loveliest party. We must find Linda. Call Nick and Susan. Maybe she's there, Johnny. Please, we must do something. All right, I'll do everything a gent can under the circumstances. Oh, <laughs> you're hopeless. <laughs> oh, Ned. Hmm? Look here. You know where she is. Linda, I mean. What's up? Well, I'm supposed to find her. You're not the house detective? No. <laughs> She's up in the old playroom on the top floor. Come on.
Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. This is a private residence. This is a private case. Uh-huh. What kind of a case? A very sad case. Oh, dear. All cut up, huh? Well, wheel it in and we'll try it out. Oh, <laughs> Johnny. Yes. Hello, dear. Hello. Hello. Is there any chance of the place being pinched? We hope so. <laughs> don't think of it, mister. The trouble we have with the police, you don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what he needed. That's what he needed. That's what he needed. That's what he needed. Some sort of great favorite? What are you talking about, Johnny? Why, that's the sun-kissed result of aerated apples. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you'd come up, Johnny. Uh, you're my pet hostess, you know. <laughs> well, I hear you're engaged. Many happy returns. Is it announced yet? Well, uh, farm boy wins heiress as Blizzard grips city. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, no, it will be announced at midnight with a roll of drums. And with that gifted entertainer, Mr. Edward Seaton, on the microphone. He has the true undertaker's touch, that man Seaton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really like him. I like him a lot. Johnny, he has an idea that you're a comer. That's the reason he was won over so quickly. Same stuff as Grandpa Seaton himself. Up from nothing, hew to the line, eat, eat. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you understand, Johnny. You understand that I am America's great social menace because I never got out and did big things. Well, you think, for instance, if I were to quit business... Oh, my dear boy, don't try it. Don't try it. Why, he'd be down on you like Grant took Bevo. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Linda. Oh. Well, folks, oh, who's... Daddy, you want a little bit more? Please, my department, sweetheart, you know that. Mm. Some for all, not all for some. Oh, but Nick... Oh, I like this place. It was Mother's idea for us. Oh, uh, I'm supposed to in inform you there's a party going on in the house. You mean that low-class dance hall downstairs? Yeah. Don't speak of it. Linda? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> Johnny? Third. To Johnny and his Julia. Julia. Yeah, well, how about the beaming fathers? Bean for them, darling, bean. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we deserve something for that, don't we? Only sandwiches. What a house. There's solid food on the way. You know, I trade 20 marbles and a jackknife for the carcass of a chicken in good repair. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, you should have been with us. There hasn't been one word of sense spoken all evening. And there won't be unless Linda gets homesick. Oh, I'm a diehard about this evening in this room. I only hope no one but Ned and Julia wander in. Well, Laura and Seaton would be fun. Oh. <laughs> Do you see those two trapezes? Distinctly. Well, time was when Seaton and I used to swing on them by our knees and spit at each other. I'm happy to say now, I seldom, if ever, miss. Oh, yes, perfect, 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 perfect. Well, aren't we going downstairs? No, no. Angel, we are and not. And why should we? Why, it's just perfect here. It's already taken 60 years off these old shoulders. Oh, look, folks, look, look, look. 11.40. Dr. Stork is on his way, dears. A little baby New Year's. <laughs> oh, always somebody tell me what I'm going to do next year. And the year after that. And the year after that. What you need is a husband, Linda. You know any good addresses? Johnny. <laughs> How long are you and Julia going to be abroad? Well, perhaps indefinitely. Oh, Julia said March. Some stock that I got at about eight was kind enough to touch 15 today. Oh, and if no. the deal I think's going through does go through, it'll do twice that. I may be dumb, but I don't... There's a very fair chance I may quit business next Saturday. Johnny! Oh, good, for as long as it lasts. Good boy, very good boy. <laughs> and do you mean to say that Julia knows nothing of this little plan? I haven't breathed a word of it to her. I want to be sure first. It all depends on what a Boston group called Bay State Power does about it. I'll know that Monday. They'll do it. I don't know what it is, but they'll do it. Johnny, oh, am I happy. Life is a grand little ride if you take it yourself. Your own way. <laughs> and no good at all if somebody else takes you on it. Oh, there's no life any good but the life you make for yourself. Hello. Huh, but isn't this lovely? Well, well, so here you are. Oh, he guessed it. Hello, well, well, Nick. <laughs> Not at all. Hello, Susan. Hello. How do you do? Hello. May we sit down a minute? Why not? <laughs> I've never been up here. It's awfully pleasant. We like it. Of course, it is a little far from the car line. And the water isn't all it might be. But, uh, but we, we like, like it. it. I'm afraid I don't follow you. You're not all tight, are you? We have a very high boiling point. You old fox, you. Sam Hobson's downstairs, and he just told me about your little hall and seaboard. Do you know there's an order in our office to buy 60,000 shares for Ross of Bay State Power, and all the way up to 30? Th then that cinches it. Look here. We'd like to have you with us in Pritchard Ames. Begin at twice what you get now, and probably a directorship in seaboard to boot. Well, 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 to boot. 
to boot. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me when I tell you, the first 50,000 is the hardest. After that, it's just plain sailing. Look out, Johnny. In two years, we can make your 40,000, 80. In five years, 200,000. Oh, my word. Lend a fellow a dime for a cup of coffee, will you, mister? Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Well, how about? I'll let you know. Look out, look. Oh. Don't worry, Linda. Just let me give you a brief outline of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. That will do for business tonight, Ethan. Well, you're the hostess here. Then let's all go downstairs and celebrate, shall we? Yes, Miss. It's such a wonderful party. I'm not going downstairs. 11.47. I wonder what can be keeping old Dr. Stork. Linda, really, people are beginning to wonder a little. I am not going downstairs. Linda, I think your conduct towards your guest tonight is simply outrageous. When a girl invites 300 people to a house and then proceeds I to... invited six people, five of whom you now see before you. All the rest came on someone else's say-so. Yours and father's, I believe. Come, Seaton. Oh, uh, Seaton. Yes? Before you go, you wouldn't care to swing on the old trapeze for a while, would you? Why? Why, I... No, I suppose not. <laughs> Linda, mark my words. One of these days, they're going to draw themselves up like that, and they won't be able to get down again. <laughs> well, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Oh, it's a grand feeling. Wait till Julia hears. And tonight of all nights, what a break that is. Oh, I knew it would come off. Go to it, boy. Oh, won't I? You just watch me. Before we spend the spring, why not spend it together? Uh-uh. Just a moment. What do you think of that, sweetheart? Do you think we could stand them? Well, oh, can I come too, please? Why, can you, I come you too? Come. We want you. We need you. How about the South of France? Why not? Oh, no, no. The air reeks of roses, and the nightingales make the nights hideous. Oh, no, no. <laughs> of course, if we all went to Norway, we could paint a house at midnight. Oh, I love No, that. no, Norway's out. It's got to be someplace where we can swim all day long. You know, it just dawned on me I've never swum enough. That's the one thing I want to do, swim. Why, my dear, well, what are you talking about? My dear boy, in the bright lexicon of youth, there's no such word. Swimming? That's for idlers. And Hawaiian. And fish. Mm. Are you a fish? Answer me. Can you look yourself squarely in the eye and say, I am a fish? No, you can't do it. You're a hard man, sir. Ah, son. It's life that's made me hard. But I only want to be like you, Daddy. How can I be like what you? What do you mean, Daddy? Stop that. Go in and ask your mama. Not another penny. Not another penny. <laughs> Tell us more, Daddy. You want to hear the story of my success? No. No, no. Very well. I'll tell you. Come, children, gather round. <laughs> Come on, please. 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 My friends. I arrived in this country at the age of three weeks with absolutely nothing in my pocket but five cents and an old hat check. <laughs> I had no friends, little or no education, and sex. Well, sex to me was still the great mystery. <laughs> but my dears, as I walked down the gangplank from that little sailing vessel, steam was unknown at the time, except among the very rich. Ah, <laughs> oh, my friends, can you... Picture that manly little figure without a tug at your heartstrings and just a faint touch of nausea. <laughs> but I pulled my belt tightly around my waist and I said to myself, don't forget you're a potter, Nick. I called myself Nick at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I soon found myself in my first job. It was in the glassworks. Glass was in its infancy then. We barely scratched the surface. <laughs> I had never shirked work, never. If there was an errand to be run, I ran five errands. If someone wanted to get off at the third floor, I took them to the tenth floor. <laughs> so naturally, of course, one day came my big chance. I was in the glass blowing department at the time. Miss Murphy's department now. And a very capable little woman Miss Murphy is. Oh, Mr. Uh, Potter, I'm no such you thing. Oh, no. <laughs> no, don't let anybody tell you differently. She certainly is. One day, my friends, I was blowing glass like a two-year-old and whistling as I blew. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly I looked down and I found in my hands a bottle, or what we now know as a bottle, and I rushed to my employer, a certain Mr. Walter P. Grandgent, and I said, Mr. Grandgent, look, look, I think I've got something here. And Mr. Grandgent looked, 
And Mr. Grand Gent laughed. Laughed. You understand? <laughs> I went from city to city like some hunted thing with that laugh always ringing before my eyes. But with me went my bottle. They called it Potter's Folly. <laughs> they said it wouldn't whistle. <laughs> Time has proved how right they were. Today, the bottle is in every home. Today, my friends, I have made the bottle a national institution. And that, my dears, is how I met your grandmama. To make the friend of rich and poor alike. To the man who brought Hawaiian music into every home. To the man who taught a nation how to swim. To Nicholas P. Potter, philanthropist and man of our town. My very dear friends, as the third vice president of the second largest spat factory in East St. Louis, I would like to say just a word in regard to what our young friend here has so quaintly termed swimming. We call it bathing. Let us bathe. <laughs> Father, you know Mr. and Mrs. Potter, Miss Jessup and Mr. Hedges? Turn it off, Linda. Julia, I've got the grandest surprise. Just a moment. You must all come down now. It's nearly 12, and we want the entire party together to see the New Year in. But there are two parties, Father. The one downstairs, and mine here. Linda, you will please do as I say. I asked permission to have a few of my friends up here tonight, and you said that I might. I have some of them now, and yes, I... I noticed you had. Nick, will you and Susan take Mary and Pete down to my sitting room? I'll be there in a minute. Why, of course, of course. Susan. Yes. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Mr. Seaton, little baby New Year's is just passing over Yonkers. To boot. Oh, this is so humiliating. Nick and Susan and Mary and Peter are my guests, not yours. And I want to entertain them up here, do you understand? There's no cause for temperature. I'll just come down now and we'll follow. Julia and I want to talk with Johnny for a moment. Listen to me, Father. Tonight means a good deal to me. Your place is downstairs. This is important to me, Father. Don't ask me why. I don't know exactly, but it has something to do with when I was a child. This room, good times. I here. insist that you do as I've told you, Linda. I suppose you realize it means the end of us, then. Don't talk nonsense. But do as I say. It is the end. But all the same, I intend to have supper here tonight in my home with my friends. Your persistence in calling this room your home is something that I cannot fathom. No, you can't, can you? But I repeat, this room is my home. It's the only home I've ever known. Certainly there's nothing downstairs that understands me or that I understand. But there is something here that, that I do understand and that understands me. Maybe it's Mother. Mother was a sweet and exciting soul, Father. But whatever happiness she ever had in this house, she had here in this room. I've told you. You thought I'd come around, didn't you? You always think people will come around. Not me. Not tonight. And I shan't be bothered here either. Because if there's one thing you can't stand, it's a scene. And if you interfere, I can promise you a beauty. Linda, if you're not happy here, why don't you go away? I... I shall be very glad if next month you will take your maid and Miss Tarkin. All right, and... Father. That's just what I am going to do right after the wedding. But no maids. And no Miss Talcott. Just me, Linda, the kid herself. Come along, Johnny. Johnny, you've done a fine piece of work, and I want to congratulate you. Seaton has told us. Marvelous. Your stock's going up with a rush, it seems. Now's the time to make hay, I think. Hay? Money. Money. Now, 
Now, all those years you worked, so they'll pay interest, Johnny. Richard Ames is a fine house. And in my opinion, you couldn't be with anything better for the time being. You better not wait too long to get Johnny into the bank, Father. He'll cost you too much. Uh, <laughs> I've made up my mind not to take up the Pusher Dames offer. What's this? Oh. I don't want to get tied up for life quite so soon. I'm afraid I'm not as anxious as I should be for the things people work toward. You see, I don't want too much money. Too much money? Well, more than I need to live by. It's always been my plan to make a few thousands early in the game if I could, and then quit for as long as they last, and try to find out who I am and what I am and, and what goes on and, and what about it. Now, while I'm young and feel good all the time. I'm sure Julia understands what I mean, don't you, Julia? What? I'm not sure that I do, Johnny. You wish to occupy yourself otherwise, is that it? As a, a gentleman of leisure? Well, as a man whose time, for a while at least, is his own. That's what I've been plugging for ever since I was ten. Right or wrong, it means more to me than anything in the world, except Julia. And I have a feeling that if I let this chance slip by, there'll never be another one for me. So I don't think anyone will mind if I just have a go at it. Will they, Julia? Will they, dear? Father, will you let Johnny and me talk a while? Just a moment. As I understand it, you have some objection, perhaps, to our manner of living? Oh, not for you, sir. I haven't the slightest doubt in the world but that it's all right for you. Or that it may be the answer for a lot of people. But for me, well, you see, I don't want to live in what they call a certain way. In the first place, I'd be no good at it. Well, in all my experience, I've never heard such a... Father, dear, it'll be all right. I promise you. Kids, it strikes me that you chose a strange time to tell us this. In fact, if I'd not already sent the announcements to the newspapers and invited a number of our friends oh, here Father. tonight... Oh, I see. Come, Julia, we must go down now. In a moment, Father. Oh, darling, he didn't get what I'm driving at at all. My plan is... Oh, Johnny, why did you do it? You know how that talk would antagonize him. You think talk is all it was? Yes, I do. I've known quite a few men who don't work. And of all the inane, unhappy lives, it's unthinkable. I might do it differently. Differently? Julia, do you love me? Oh, you won't listen to me. Yes, I will. I suppose it doesn't occur to you how it would look for you to stop work now. Look? Why, how? Oh, you mean there'd be those who'd think I'd married money and then call it a day? There would be. There'd be plenty of them. I shouldn't mind. Oh, darling, don't you see what I'm aiming at either? Just try a little blind fate for a while, won't you? Come along with me. Johnny... The whole way, dear. Johnny, wait until next year. Or two years. And we'll think about it again. If it's right, it can be done then as well as now. You can do that for me, for us, can't you? You think by that time that I'd have come around? That's what you think, isn't it? I'd have come around. But don't you see that if... Oh, it isn't so important. We must go downstairs now. You coming? In a moment. I want to talk to Linda first, if you don't mind. But I do mind. Will you come, please? In a moment. right now. I'm afraid I don't know how to entertain you. I've done all my stuff. I don't need entertaining. Well, you... You wouldn't care to step into a wolf, would you, Mr. Kate? I'd love it.
There's a conspiracy against you and me, child. I suppose, like the fathead you are, you told them all your little hopes and dreams. Yeah. Pretty disappointing? Pretty bad. Poor boy. How about your own evening? Not so good either. Poor girl. Well, we won't mind, will we? We won't mind. Place head, A, against cheek, B, and proceed as before. <laughs> of course, they may be right. Don't you believe it? They seem awful sure. It's still your ride, isn't it? You know where you want to go, don't you? You're a brick, Linda. Shut your silly face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's enough. I'm getting excited. What? Thanks. You can go now. This is grand. Listen. And that's it, all right. Happy New Year, Johnny. Happy New Year, dear. Attractive. You're... You're all right yourself. Oh, no, no, they'll be waiting. You can count on Sister Linda, John. Linda. What? They've... Your father... Well, I've been put in a position that... Do you love Julia, Johnny? Why, of course I do. If ever she needed you, she needs you now. I... Oh, Nettie. Once it's announced, she'll go through with it. Then you can help her. I can't anymore. I've tried for 20 years. You're her only hope. Go on, Johnny. Hello, Nettie. Hello, Johnny. What's it like to get drunk, Ned? It's hard drunk. Good and drunk. Grand. Brings you to life. After a while, you're not afraid of anything. You feel, well, I don't know, important. That must be good. How long can you keep it up? Long as you last. Where do you finish? Where does everybody finish? You die. And that's all right, too. What's the matter, Linda? Oh, nothing. I know. Yeah? Johnny. Give me some more, Ned. He's a funny guy, isn't he? Give me some. You can tell me about it, dear.
I love the boy, Nettie. I thought so. Hell, isn't it? I guess it will be. Here's luck for you. I don't want any luck. Oh. I guess what I'd better do is... Maybe I ought to go down. Do you mind? For that reason, I am particularly gratified in seeing you here tonight. And so, my very good friends, I have the honor to announce the engagement of my daughter, Julia, to Mr. John Cage. An event which doubles the pleasure I have in wishing you and them a most prosperous and happy new year. <laughs> I do wish you wouldn't rehearse. It's not Oh, I'm not a bit superstitious, and besides, I want it to be right. <laughs> Doctor, don't you think that was much too slow? It seems to me we should try it again. Don't you think so, Seaton? Oh, yes, dear. The ceremony should be perfect. I'm sure it will be. Just tell the organist to play slightly faster. Will you play the wedding march just a little faster, please? Very well, Doctor. And, Doctor, don't you think that we need more rehearsal? Well, it seems all right to me. Seaton and I are glad to rehearse. Well, it's Johnny and Julia that are getting married. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> Don't you think we should rehearse the part of a ceremony where Seaton, as best man, gives the ring to Johnny? That's generally very awkward. If you like. Uh, well, I stand there and I say... Now, Doctor, show Mr. Case what he does with the ring. When I ask for the ring, Mr. Cram will place it upon the book. I then proceed to the altar, followed by the bride and groom. At the altar, I bless the ring, turn, and give it to the groom, who will place it upon the bride's finger, holding it there, while he repeats after me, with this ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father... But, Doctor, don't you think the other way is preferable? But, Mrs. Cram, this is the correct way. But surely, Doctor, Seaton and I were married in a correct fashion. And I remember distinctly that the minister gave the ring to Seaton, who in turn gave it to me, who in turn gave it to the best man. It was George Atterbury. You remember. Whatever happened to George? I haven't heard of him. <laughs> he, in turn, gave it to the clergyman. But, my dear Mrs. Cram, you insisted upon that procedure. And you remember at the time, we went into the beautiful, symbolic value of that stuff. But that's all founded upon a misunderstanding. Uh, go ahead, Doctor. Let's not get too involved. Well, of course you know best. What is the thing? I have it. Uh, oh, Nick Potter has it. But Seaton should have it. Do you think it's wise for him to have it before the actual ceremony, I mean? Think of the temptation it may lead him into. I remember when I was we'll a kid about the ring business privately, Splendid. Oh, I do think we should try to walk again. Now, Uncle Ned... I'm uh, sorry, Laura, but I must be going. All right, we won't need you. Or oh, Johnny or Julia, either. Just the ashes and bridesmaids. Now, suppose we all go back to the vestibule and start over again. Mm -hmm. 
Will you stick to the organist, Doctor? Certainly, Mrs. Graham. Now, uh, Laura, you're sure that we start on the left foot? Yes, the left foot. And you're positive that you want us to go way down to the end of that aisle again? Nick, please. You know, Laura has the most delightful way of making one feel absolutely unnecessary. Oh, she means all right. I'll see you folks at the house later. Uh, yes, sir. I'll head in there, Father. Your affiliation with Pritchard Name should be announced now while you're in the papers. Uh, but, Mr. Uh, Stevens. We'll talk it over at the house, Father. Yes, yes, I. I, I can't wait now. But I'm not going with Pritchard Name. I told your father that yesterday at luncheon. But I think Father and Seaton have it all arranged. Don't you see how simple everything will be for us? Won't it, Linda? Perfectly simple, as long as you do as you're told. But that isn't true. That isn't true at all. What is, then? Father is being splendid to us. He's always splendid when he's having his own way. Well, I doubt if he could always have his own way, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, will you quit bickering over nothing? Don't you think we should decide whether or not it is really nothing? But try it. Just two or three years. We must be clear about this before we get in any deeper. Johnny. Well, we can't just go on sliding forever. What is it you want? I, I want time to think. You may have anything you wish, only let's not talk about it anymore. All right. I'll take you home now. And when you get there, don't further antagonize my father. But, Julia, feeling as I do, I can't just sit and listen to him. Well, then, it's better that you don't come to the house at all tonight. Oh, all right. I'll just take you home. You needn't bother. I'll go with Laura and Seaton. I'll call you up tomorrow. Good night. Oh, Julia, why don't you try to see it Johnny's way? Because I know mine is the right way. He'll come around. Are you sure he'll come around, Julia? Are you sure he'll come around? You only stop. I couldn't stand, Laura, another second. Let Johnny and me work out our own problems. Good night. Good night. Good night. Girl bite sister in fashionable church. And no wonder, Linda, I give you my word, if I had to walk down that aisle once more, I would never oh. speak to Susan again. Oh, please, leave us leave this place in our heated barouche. That's Come the on, girl. Linda. Linda. Nick, you don't know that man. Oh, wouldn't you think she'd know by now that men like Johnny don't grow on every bush? But you see, the things you like in him are just the things she can't stand, Linda. And the faith you say he'll save her from is the one faith in this whole world she wants. I don't believe it. Even so, she loves him. And there's been a break. And wouldn't you think she'd be woman enough to at least hang on? Oh, I don't know. There's one woman I know who isn't woman enough to grab. We're sorry, Linda. Really, we are. Oh, you're not sorry. What's the matter with me? Linda, I could shake you. I wish you would. I wish somebody wouldn't until there wasn't anything left to shake. And there's nothing to be done about it. If they'd only listen to me. I've got to make them listen. Yes. It would be a pity to deprive your father of the pleasure of easing Johnny into society. Can't you see it in the paper? Mr. and Mrs. John Sebastian Case have closed their 64th Street house and gone to Coney Island for the hunting. <laughs> Mrs. Case will be remembered, of course, as the former Julia Seaton of Seaton Freddy. Your mind reading act is terrible. Well, well, for the love of Pete, Linda. May I come in? There's no one I'd rather see. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Were those your trunks I saw downstairs? I'm sailing tonight. On the Paris. Johnny. Alone. 
Julia doesn't know? She wouldn't be interested. Oh, but... We've talked for a week. We're farther apart than ever. She hasn't talked to me. You still have a lot to do. Yes. May I help? Oh, thanks. Where do you want these? Oh, here. Over here in the suitcase. Oh, not like that. Not like that. Come in. Oh. Here's your check, mister. Thanks. There you are. So you're really going? Yes, for the first time in my life, I'm going to do what I want to do. And the prospect is at least exciting. I'll miss you, Johnny. It's nice to know there's someone who'll miss me. Oh, Johnny, don't. You know Julia will be unhappy. Not just a little while. Maybe her whole life through. She's never loved anyone but you. I've never loved anyone but Julia. Oh, take her with you. Kidnap her if you have to. Well, you can't just go without telling her. It wouldn't do any good. But you don't know, Johnny. But I do. Oh, quit talking like that. Quit it. Johnny, you've got to try, do you hear? You've got to make her see that you're right. Even if it takes me a couple of hundred years. But it won't. Oh, you're right. It would probably take longer than that. Oh, you're just plain stubborn. Goodbye. Goodbye, Linda. She's worth a try, Johnny. Stop it. Stop pretending that you don't care. You seem to be taking my little difficulty more seriously than I am. If you don't want Johnny to sail tonight and make a hash of both your lives, you'd better send him some message down to the boat. Somehow I don't think that's necessary. He's no more sailing tonight than I am. Three. This will do, I think. Yes, miss. And I'll wear those uh, crystal um, necklaces and earrings. You know the ones I mean? Yes, miss. Why do you shut me out in the cold like this? I wasn't aware that I was. Johnny and I have had a difference of opinion, and you're siding with him, that's all. But he's right. He's right for you as well as for himself. I think that's for me to decide. Not Father. Father has nothing to do with it. Oh, no. He happens to agree with me where you don't. We always agreed before. Always. Oh, it's nothing to get in a state about. You've been an immense help, often. But when it comes to determining my future, and the future of the man I'm going to marry... Your future? What do you want, Julia? Just security? Sit back in your feather boa among the worthies of the world? Oh, don't tell me that's what you want. For one thing, I don't want to continue this aimless discussion. 
Well, there's not a poor girl in this city that isn't happier than we are. At least, they still want what we've got. They think it's good. If they knew. And I think it's good. Don't tell me that's what you want. That's what I want, and that's all I want. Then it's hopeless. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You're not going to the boat tonight? No, I'm not. For well, one thing, Julia, I understand now why some people throw bombs at other people. Oh, Marie. Like a drink? No, thanks. Well, perhaps you don't need one. You're not going to the Dodds reception. <laughs> You're getting away with a good deal here lately. Success. Ned, what's to be done about Johnny and Julia? Why do anything? You know, most people, including Johnny and yourself, make a big mistake about Julia. They're taken in by her looks. At bottom, she's a very dull girl, and the life she pictures for herself is the life she belongs in. Oh, you've never hit it off, that's all. Ned, do you remember what we were talking about New Year's Eve? Does it stand out all over me? Why, Linda? Nick and Susan, I think they got it. Anyone who loves you would, Linda. Oh, that's awful. I'm so ashamed. I'm not, though. Come in. Mr. Case is in the library. Well, Miss Judy's in her room. He asked for you, Miss. Oh. Well, tell him I'll be right now. Are you so sure you want to get over him? No, I don't. And that's what scares me so. I feel alive and I love it. Oh, I've got to get over him. Why? Because it seems so hopeless. Seem? Why, what do you mean? Don't you know? So let me tell you something. You're twice as attractive as Julia ever thought of being. You've got twice the looks, twice the mind, and ten times the courage. You've lived in her shade for years now, and there's nothing to it. Why, well, you could charm a bird off a tree, if you would. And why not? If you were in her way, she'd ride you down like a rabbit. Oh, Ned, that's rotten. Knowing the way she loves him. That's rotten. All right. Tell him hello for me, will you? Hey, come here. If there's one thing I'll do in my life, it'll be to let the fresh air back into you again. Do you hear me? I'll do it if I have to shoot you. Boogie, boogie, boogie. I'm glad you're here, Johnny. Why didn't you have yourself announced to Julia straight off? In a minute. Do you... I, I suppose you've decided something or other. I'm going to stick to my job, if that's what you mean. I see. But only for a while. Only for a couple of years, say, and until I can get her to see what I mean. Well, it's, it's only what Julia asked. And after all, a couple of years isn't a lifetime. No, of course not. I can see the way they look at it. I could hardly expect them to suddenly do an about face. But hang it all, they ought at least to see what I'm getting at. Perhaps eventually they will. Well, that's what I'm counting on. Linda, 
You agree there's only one thing for me to do now. I don't think it matters a bit what I think. Uh, but it does. You think it's right, don't you? Say you think it's right. Shall I send for Julian? Say it first. Johnny, when two people love each other as much as you do, anything that keeps them apart must be wrong. Will that do? And shall I send for enough? Go ahead. Julia, do you mind coming down for a minute? Well, no, it isn't a telegram. Why are you coming, Julia? All right. She'll be down in a minute. If she doesn't fall asleep. Oh, Johnny, don't talk like that. I can't bear to hear your voice do that. Well, you care more about what happens to me than she does. What? Why, don't be silly. Maybe I feel things about you that she doesn't because... Well, perhaps it's because I'm not in love with you. You know how I feel about you, don't you? I'd be glad to hear. I like you better than anyone else in the world. That's very nice, Johnny. Because I like you a good deal, too. Oh, for the love of heaven. Well, 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 well. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I haven't seen you in quite some time. It's a pleasure to see you here again. It's pleasant to be here. Thank you. Father, Johnny came tonight to see Julia. Well, that uh, doesn't surprise me a great deal, daughter. Not a great deal. Julia, not you and me. <laughs> Come on, let us go bye-bye. Well, then what's the idea of... Oh. Uh, Julia, put on a wrap, please. We're going out. Father, you won't mind if just tonight Johnny and I... Please, uh, close the door, Julia. I have something to say to you both. You insist in placing me in a position that I don't in the least relish. Uh, oh, come in, Ned. Come in, come in. Coming between two young people in love is furthest from my wish or intention. For love, true love, is a very rare and beautiful thing. Uh, where are you going? Please sit down. And I believe its path, that is to say the path of true love, contrary to the adage, should run smooth. But in order that it may, I am a man of 58 years and speak from long experience and observation. It is of paramount importance. Beg your sir. pardon, sir? Yes. If Pritchard Abe still want me, I'll go with them when we come back from our wedding trip. Say, about March 1st. Oh, Johnny. I still... I'm still not convinced. I still don't believe in it. But it's what Julia wishes, and I'm glad to defer to her wish. And now, in heaven's name, may they be left alone, or shall we all move over to Madison Square Garden? You, uh... You say you're not convinced as yet? Would you like me to lie to you, sir? Oh. It's enough for me, Father. Julia's had a year or two. I'll go with them for three years. I'll work harder than I've ever worked before. I'll do everything I can to make a success of it. The only thing I ask is that if, at the end of that time, I still feel I want to quit for a while, there won't be any more objections. Well, I doubt if by that time there'll be reason for any. We'll have to see about that, sir. Well, Father? When is it you wish to be married? As soon as possible. Sooner. Well, we'll have to talk this over. Now, the invitations will have to be out for ten days at least. Uh, what would you say to two weeks from Wednesday? Oh, that would be perfect. Now, uh, have you made any plans for your... Uh, Wedding trip, as well, yet, may we, I ask? We haven't any very definite plans, mostly France, I expect. Well, it's always wise to have definite arrangements for a honeymoon. Now, I would suggest that you land at Southampton and uh, proceed straight to London. I'll cable my sister. She and her husband will be very glad to have you stay with them. Oh, good heavens, Father. He is Sir Horace Porter, one of the most influential men in British banking circles. Father, I'm not sure. Oh, Julie, you could scarcely go abroad enough stop with your Aunt Helen. Besides, it would save hotel uh, expenses, and uh, Johnny might learn something of British methods. Then I'll cable the Bouviers of Paris. He was expert advisor to the Minister of Finance during the late war. The very good man for you to know. 
They also will be very glad for, uh, to entertain you. Well, I had thought of this as more as a lark than a business trip, sir. Well, surely there's no harm in combining a little business with pleasure, is there? I've never found there was. They have a lovely place. A week in, uh, in London, a week in Paris. One hour in the Louvre. Ten days at Cannes, ideal. Then you might sail from Genoa, return by the southern route. I'll arrange to have your house ready for you to go into March 1st. Thanks, dear. Well, what house is that, Julia? Oh, Father is lending us the sweetest little place in 64th Street, dear. I've also decided uh, to turn the cottage at the Poplars over to you for the summers. Now, there is a sweet little place. Only 15 master's bedrooms. Oh, Father, you shouldn't. You really should not. Yeah. Oh, wait till you see it, Johnny. Now, this is not a deed of gift, you know. Not yet. No, no, not yet. Perhaps after you've occupied them four or five years, my hard old heart may soften. <laughs> oh, listen to him. His hard old heart. Did you ever know of anyone so sweet? Julia, I'm sorry, but I can't stand it. Would you mind telling me what you mean? Well, if we begin like this, loaded down with obligations, possessions, responsibilities, well, how would we ever get out from under them? We never would. Uh -huh. Well, no, you're very kind, sir, and generous, but, but it's not for me. May I ask what is for you? Well, I don't know yet, but I know it's not that. We're to understand, then, that you are not returning to work. That work? For this? No. But you said... I'm right back where I was before, Julia. I see now it's got to be a clean break. It's simply got to. I, if I remember correctly, a short time ago, a day or so, you intimated that you might follow some occupation. Well, eventually, yes, but I think I may still be fairly active at 35 or 40. Oh, I see. Julia, if you marry this young man now, I doubt if he will ever again earn one penny. Julia, if it's important to you, I promise that I'll always earn my own living. And what's more, if there's need of it, I'll always earn yours. Thanks. Oh, my dear, we've got to make our own life. It's no good if we don't. There's no other way to live it. Let's forget all about two weeks from Wednesday and wedding invitations. Let's go now. Let's be married tonight. I must decide now, must I? Please. And if I say no, not unless you... Then I'm going tonight, by myself. Very well, then. You may go. I don't quite see myself with an idler for a husband. You know, I suppose the fact is, I love feeling free inside even more than I love you, Julia. Apparently. Or what you call feeling free. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. I'm sorry we couldn't make a go of it. Thanks for trying. Goodbye, Linda. You've been sweet. Goodbye, Johnny. So have you. I hope you find what you're looking for. I hope you do. You did want someone along with you on the big ride, didn't you? I did, you know. Poor boy. But we'll get there. Sure, we'll get there. Linda. Oh, please do. Goodbye, Ned. I'll miss that man. He's really gone. Yes, and in my opinion. Good riddance, eh? Really gone. Oh, never mind, dear. Never mind. If he loves you, he'll be back. Be back? Be back, did you say? What do you think I am? Do you think all I have to do with my time is to persuade a, a lightweight like him that there's something to life beside having fun and more fun? I hope, Julia, this experience will teach you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm all right. Even a little more than all right, I should say. Hmm. Narrow squeak, wasn't it? What's the matter with you? You don't love him. You kindly of take your hands off of me. Answer me. Do you or do you not? And what's that to you, may I ask? What's it to me? Oh, what's it to me? Answer me. Father, what's the matter with her? You don't, do you? I can see you don't. It's written all over you. You're relieved he's gone. Relieved. 
And suppose I am. She asked me to suppose she is. Are you? Say it. I'm so relieved I could sing with it. Is that what you want? Yes. Sing. Oh, out of my way. I've got work to do. Wait for me here, Ned. I'll be back in a second. Linda, I want to talk to you. Sorry, Father. I'm going to be busier in the next half hour than I've ever been in my life. Dear, I'm going to sail tonight on the Paris. And just one suitcase and an overnight bag will do. And, oh, just anything. Nothing dressy. You know what to put in. And I want that picture of Mother. The one in the leather frame on my dressing table. Yes, you Miss. Know, hurry, yes, dear. Yes. Hurry. Pier 57, North River, the French line. You'll have to hurry. We've only got 20 minutes. Right. We'll make it. Marie, stop. All right. Play down, Miss. You get everything downstairs, dear, and I won't be a minute. I'll be right back. Maybe. Hmm? My passport. Will you come with me tonight? Oh, I couldn't tonight. Oh, yes, you could. If I can, you can. Linda, where are you going? Tell me instantly. On a trip. On a big ride. Oh, what a ride. Do you mind? Listen, Father, I'd like very much to go with her. The trip is out of the question now. Please remember that you have a position to fill. You are not an idler. A trip? Where? You won't? I can't. I'll be back for you, Ned. I'll be here. Linda, what... You've no faith in Johnny, have you, Julia? His little dream may fall flat, you think. Yes, so it may. What about it? What if it does, there'll be another. The point is, he does dream. Oh, I've got all the faith in the world in Johnny. Whatever he wants to do is all right with me. He wants to come back and sell peanuts. Oh, how I'll believe in those peanuts. Goodbye, Julia. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Nettie. Goodbye, kid. Good luck. Never you fear. I'll be back for you, my fine buckle. All right, kid. As yet you've not said where it is, George. I know. And try and stop me, someone. Oh, please, somebody, try and stop me. I shan't permit it, Linda. I shall... Permit it? Permit, Linda? Don't make me laugh, Father. She's going with him, isn't she? Isn't she? Going to get her Johnny. A fine chance she's got. Any bets? Any bets, Julia? Linda! And while we're at it, Grandfather! Make it. Pier 57, North River, French line. I've only got 15, 13 minutes. You think you can make it? 13 is me lucky number. Oh, it's a matter of life and death. And don't you think I'm awfully young to die? Don't worry, sister. I'll make it. Get in. Atta boy. Goodbye, dear. Your friends Goodbye. 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 Goodb